Sitting out here in the uh, new uh, expansion of the shop area to the south, and I'm working on anchors. And you're probably wondering, the concrete looks pretty new. Are you working on anchors? The concrete contractor failed to install any of the anchors that I provided. A lot of bucketful, half inch anchor bolts, J bolts, didn't install on one of them. So in order for me to pass an inspection, I've got to do it. Now, technically, this is an interior wall because it's behind that. Uh, you might be asking why I'm covering up the brick. Well, I've got to support the roof joist, ceiling joist, and this was actually the cheapest way to do it. And it also gives me a place to run wiring, networking, water, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of convenient. Uh, so what I've done is I've drilled three quarter inch holes along this uh, wall segment. It's about 40 feet long and uh, one foot from the end every four feet. That's what's called for by our code here. Uh, we don't have any seismic um, requirements like folks maybe in certain areas of the country, West Coast, Pacific Northwest, New Madrid area, that kind of thing. So we don't have any of those, but one foot from the end every four feet, you have to have an anchor. So we've got these five eighths inch uh, by eight inch long chunks of stainless steel threaded rod. And I've drilled in far enough. I try to get four inches of engagement in the slab. So if you take the inch and a half out for the sill plate, I got about four inches, four and a half inches. Um, I've blown out the holes and vacuumed out the holes and brushed out the holes, blown out the holes, vacuumed out the holes. Try to get the holes as free of dust and other surface contaminants as I can to give the epoxy the best chance of achieving a good bond. Um, and this epoxy is something that I picked up at a local big box store. It's a rapid set, fast anchoring and repair adhesive. Um, this is my third tube. I've already done all of the anchors along the eastern wall and the southern wall. And I've done some in this wall, and then I ran out of this. Well, to be more accurate, I let the stuff <laughs> achieve complete <laughs> hardness in the applicator tube and was unable to get anything else out of the tube. I had used most of it. Uh, the first two tubes I got were the ultra fast anchoring and repair adhesive. And when they mean ultra fast, they mean it. Uh, in this heat, five minutes, this stuff's solid as a rock. Uh, this one may be a little slower, so I'm hopeful. Um, but still, they give you two of these tubes for a reason. Um, once I get the adhesive in the hole, you thread the rod down in until you get some squeeze out here. You, you putty knife it off. Then I've got um, some, I made some washers out of some scrap. Um, 3 16 stainless bar that I had, flat bar that I had laying around. And I just took uh, random chunks. This is stuff that was in the scrap bin. See, I got an extra hole. And um, the rod will go in here. This will drop on there. And you got a 5 8 nut. And boom, you got a pretty effective hold down.
I don't know that you need one of these high force um, caulking guns, but it doesn't hurt. Show you. See, it makes in the tube. Well, there you go. Um, all the concrete uh, hold down bolts are in place. Had to drill all those myself. You're probably wondering yourself, Kilroy, how do you get yourself in this predicament? Well, and I know you're not going to let me out of here without showing you some more pictures of the project. So I've got a bunch of pictures and some video clips of the construction up to this point. So I'm going to disappear and do a little voiceover as we go over um, the project to this point. So I hope you enjoy and um, I'll sign off now and uh, just say uh, stay safe in the shop and I'll be back with you soon. So the place most construction projects start is with demolition and uh, this piece of concrete here that this Bobcat's working on turned out to be over 14 inches thick. Uh, the front of this building used to be a gas station and this was a raised section. It was the office and then the uh, people would come across the corner to uh, pump gas into their cars. Uh, this produced a fair amount of rubble. You can see how thick some of this concrete is. Interestingly, not a single bit of this concrete had steel in it. So this building used to be brick two-story all the way to the street. And as we were doing this demolition of the surface concrete, we found the remnants of the old wall. You can see the edge of the wall. It used to continue all the way past here. And this building used to also have a basement. So that wall right there is about 18 inches thick and goes down at least a whole nother floor. So we're not going to worry about excavating that. We're just going to pour concrete right on top of it. So you can see the um, uh, steel laying. I would kind of missed out through the digging here. The steel laying has begun. Uh, footers were dug all the way around 18 by 24 and one up the middle. Uh, there are six half inch bars in each footer. Uh, three top, three bottom, and then a mat of half-inch bars on 12-inch center, uh, both directions all the way across the field. So things are going to get serious. You see the pump trucks here. We're starting to pump concrete. Uh, here they're pumping concrete into a knee wall uh, for the east side that's going to hopefully keep water out of my building. Uh, we have some issues with the street on that side being... Uh, the curb height being too low. And uh, here's some more detail of them pumping this stuff in. So uh, we ended up pumping in a total of 45 cubic yards of concrete into this slab. So there's uh, many things I'm not happy with about the slab, but uh, strength is not one of those things. So the finish work is going on here. They're um, uh, working on the, the concrete. This was a really bad day to pour concrete. It was hot, hot, hot. And uh, it's just really difficult to finish concrete well at 100 degrees. And this is some more of the stuff I really wasn't happy with. What exactly is that? And 
then there's always the mess that contractors leave around.